Roblox Combat Initiation is a game I feel that released at the perfect time, with the perfect premise. It's an ultra kill fan game that uses simple but intuitive gameplay and combines it with the old Roblox style, which is pretty popular these days. Not only that, but it's just a genuinely good game, with just about everything being solid and polished, and not a pay to win aspect in sight. But as always, I'm not here to gush about the gameplay. You saw the title. In today's video, I'll be diving into the lore of combat initiation, at least what exists at the moment. Since the game is in its earliest stages, with a level 4 being slated to release relatively soon, there isn't too much lore to be had so far, but I think there's just enough for me to at least give one theory video before that update releases. So without further ado, please be sure to like, comment for the algorithm, and subscribe, and let's dive in. So let's begin with the actual events of the game. In the game we play as either a solo or group of Robloxians who battle other Robloxians. So far there's only like three stages, but each one is set in a classic Roblox map, such as crossroads or glass houses. Each level, the player fights waves of enemies, buys stuff from the shop, or fights more enemies, kills a boss, and then moves on. There's no real storyline to follow or anything, so not a lot of lore comes from this. Instead, most of the lore can be found within background details and the enemy index, which I'll get to now. In the enemy index, we can learn a lot more information about the game and the plot of the game. Like I said earlier, the game is incomplete at the moment, so a lot of enemies just have little or flat out no information about them, but the ones that do provide us enough information to make theories. For example, take the description of the lowly Robloxian enemy. Here, we learn that all people, or users, started out as nothing more than just noobs, and over time, a complex hierarchical system developed, placing Robloxians into specifications and certain skill sets, growing their numbers for an unknown reason. This was probably done to bolster the number of Robloxians present in the world to increase their population of cities and stuff. We know from the Bobby description that eventually the number of citizens grew so much that the Betty police force had to be developed and created in order to keep people in line. Out of every enemy in the game, however, we learn the most from the Killbot description. We learn here that a series of wars broke out between two of these many civilizations, the Blue Falcons and the Red Hawks. Both sides created Killbots and tanks and cannons and fortifications in order to destroy each other. This was likely the first of many different great wars fought between all the Robloxians. We also learn from the description that the Robloxians have, or at least had, a leader, Telemann. For those who don't know, Telemann is the original account name of John Sedletsky, the former creative director at Roblox. This leads into a pretty big theory that I have. So we know that these wars happened prior to the game's events, with the descriptions for the Killbots stating that they were reactivated upon our arrival. We can assume Glass Houses was the place wars started, and if not, we can at least assume that it was a very important place due to all the defenses laid out around it. It is also a place we know where Telemann was. Now, I want you to look at the Vagabond, aka the third boss fought in the game. Pretty cool design, right? Well now, take a look at the Roblox Telemann account's avatar, specifically what the avatar looked like during January of 2008. And what do you know, they look very, very similar. Additionally, this was the avatar Telemann had in winter of 2008. And what is the theme of glass houses in combat initiation? That's right, winter. It is my theory that Telemann is actually the Vagabond, dethroned and bitter and seeking to reunite the people of Robloxia. I think this theory holds quite a bit of merit, but there are a few flaws. The captain boss of the second level bears a striking resemblance to the Shedleski accounts of the old days as well, because John, I guess, had a thing for pirates, I guess. However, I think that the Vagabond being Telemann lines up more due to the history of the level he's in, and also the enemy description spelling out that Telemann was at glass houses at some point. So, where is the game's lore going to take us in the future? Well, I can very easily see the enemies becoming more and more technologically advanced as we get further and further into the game. I suspect the final level will be like Roblox HQ or something, where we will finally face off against Builderman or whoever else is at the top of this, as well as learning more about why these wars started in the first place. Regardless, things are kind of sparse right now, so I think I'll end the video off here. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please be sure to like and subscribe and comment and all those funny things, because it really helps boost these videos in the algorithm, especially when they're on more niche topics like this one. Um, anyways, yeah, that's about it. Bye.